All right, Shalom. This is your brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and the sincere Sayyidish Tawyuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And it reads, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. All right, and I want to go into a lesson through the Spirit on um, the curse, this curse in particular, dealing with our life hanging in doubt, all right, um, and the trembling of heart and failing of eyes, all right, which ultimately creates a inferiority complex in our people. And the reason I say that is because when we tell our people what the Lord said concerning us being above all nations, our people are the ones who resist that notion the most. And it's ultimately because they have an inferiority complex. Now, when you go to this Hebrew word doubt in Deuteronomy 28 and 66, the Hebrew word for doubt is tala. All right, tala. And it says to hang, hang to, cling to. Now, check the Strong's definition out. All right. It says to suspend figuratively through hesitation to be uncertain by implication of mental dependence to habituate, be bent, hang in doubt. All right. And this is why uh, most of our people can't take hold of the hope that is in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai of the promises. And they can't take hold of a ruling class mentality because a lot of our people still deal with an inferiority complex where they truly believe that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, is better than us. That not only him, but the other nations are better than us. That all we are good for is being servants to other nations. And most of our people have internalized that idea. And that is an inferiority complex. All right. Now I want to go into the definition of inferiority complex really quick. All right. This is inferiority complex. And it says in psychology, an inferiority complex is an intense personal feeling of inadequacy, often resulting in the belief that one is in some way deficient or inferior to others. And that is our people in a nutshell, even though they're, they're not going to admit it. This is the mentality of a lot of our people. All right. Now, when you go down. Let's go here. It says an inferiority complex may cause an individual to overcompensate in a number of ways. For example, a person who feels inferior because they are shorter than average, also known as a Napoleon complex, may become overly concerned with how they appear to others. They may wear special shoes to make themselves appear taller or surround themselves with individuals who are even shorter than they are. If this is taken to the extreme, it becomes neurosis. Now, this is basically explaining that those who have an inferiority complex, they overcompensate. So they become overly aggressive, which is what our people do at large amongst each other. All right. They take out their frustration of being um, labeled as the bottom and the base of, uh, of this world. And they take it out on each other because ultimately it goes back to that inferiority complex. And this is why our people treat the so-called white man better than they treat their own people. All right. And that goes back to um, another term known as Stockholm syndrome. And we'll get that one as well. All right. Now, I want to continue. It says it may also cause an individual to be prone to flashy outward displays with behavior ranging from attention seeking to excessive competitiveness and aggression 
in an attempt to compensate for their either real or imagined deficiencies. All right. So because as a nation of people, uh, the Lord has put us in this predicament because of transgression, our people have adopted the inferiority complex where they actually believe this should be our permanent position on the earth. All right. This is why the Lord said this. All right. This is Jeremiah. Chapter two and verse 14 reads, is Israel a servant? Is he a home born slave? Why is he spoiled? And most of our people have become accustomed to being in a position of uh, being in servitude. You know, I was watching uh, the um, elder in L uh, London and uh, he was going into this uh, dealing with the mixed multitude. And he mentioned that he asked a guy, he told a guy that uh, we're going to have the other nations in slavery. And the guy basically said, I don't want slaves. And that really goes back to an inferiority complex. All right, because Jake truly believes that he doesn't deserve to be in a position of power. All right. They actually believe that they are servants to these other nations. And this is our only position on earth forever. All right. This is Ecclesiastes. Chapter 10 and verse six. And it reads, folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Now, because things have been turned upside down, our people believe that this is how it's always going to be. And this is why they can't fathom the Lord placing us above all nations. This is why beginning with our apostles on down, there's such an emphasis on having a ruling class mentality. The other nations on the earth are not fighting to be equal with any other nation of people. They are fighting to be the number one nation on the earth. China, which is the Moabites, is a perfect example. They're making deals. They're, they're doing whatever they're doing, but they're not doing it to be equal to other nations. Because they have a ruling class mentality. And this is something that our people lack, even though it was intended for our people. All right. This is why the Lord said this. Isaiah one and three. And it reads, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. And our people are the ones who don't consider that they deserve to be above other nations. They have no uh, sovereign interest or a desire to be uh, sovereign at all. All right. True freedom, not just permission from another nation of people on how you can live. But it all it ultimately goes back to this term inferiority complex. All right. Now, when you go into the definition, it says, according to the Cambridge Dictionary of Psychology and Illyrian psychology, a combination of an erroneous belief of an individual that they are unable to cope with some aspect of life because of a real or imagined physical or psychological deficiency, feelings of depression and a succession of coping efforts in that area. In another sense, a general term for a personal sense of inferiority. All right. And our people have embodied this from the beginning, uh, from the beginning of school in this system. You're taught that you're on the bottom. And this is why they only give you slavery as a part of your history and the civil rights movement. Because it builds an inferiority complex in our people. And this is why the scriptures say this about the truth. All right. John chapter eight and verse thirty two reads. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because once you come into this understanding and you're uh, renewed in your mind, you understand that the Lord chose a nation of people above all nations. And we are that nation of people. All right. Yet the scriptures say Israel doth not consider because ultimately our people have lost their confidence. All right. Khan is with Fider, uh, Fider or Fidence goes back to Fider, meaning faith. They've lost their faith. And ultimately, our faith should be in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And through the Lord, our enemies will fall. But Jake does not consider these things, nor do they believe these things are even possible. 
All right. Hosea 1 and 10 reads, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And even now our people can't receive that information, even though everything about our life goes back to the scriptures. And the first people our people ask about when we talk about salvation only being for Israel is the one that put them in chains. And that goes back to Stockholm Syndrome. All right. So let's get that as well. This is Stockholm Syndrome. And it says Stockholm Syndrome is a coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situation. People develop positive feelings toward their captors or abusers over time. This condition applies to situations including child abuse, coach athlete abuse, relationship abuse, and sex trafficking. All right. And this is a perfect example of our people who have positive feelings, all right, towards the captors or abusers of our people, which is the so-called white man. And when we tell our people that they're going to go into captivity for what they've done to our people, they have a soft heart for the same people that put them in chains. And this also goes back to the inferiority complex and this Stockholm syndrome. And this is why people can't imagine being on the top, being above all nations of people. All right. Being the head and not the tail. Jake has been the tail for so long. They believe that they belong here. All right. And we don't. All right. We are actually princes of Yahweh Shemal Shai. And what we're going through right now is a punishment. But it's not permanent. All right. We're not supposed to be here forever. And that's why the prophecies are so important, because it gives us a window into how long we'll be here. Even though we don't know the exact time or date, prophecy tells us how close we are to it. And that's why a ruling class mentality is so important. Here it is. You have a nation like the Moabites. All right. Who are not regarded um, highly in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Yet they have a, a ruling class mentality on the earth. And Jake, all right, the one people that the Lord has placed as the apple of his eye. Are the exact same people who believe that they belong in chains forever. Now, Jake won't say that outright. Yet their actions uh, speak to this. When we're on the highways and hedges and we tell our people. The so-called white man is going into uh, slavery. You know, you can see the cringe on our people's face. They're more offended by that than the so-called white man is, because ultimately it goes back to a sickness that our people have. And it's not a economic problem. It's a spiritual problem with our people, man. All right. This is a uh, Habakkuk chapter one and verse five. And it reads, behold, ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. So here it is. We're telling our people that all of our enemies are going into captivity. Yet our people will not receive that, though they be told it. And this is the good news to our people. Yet they can't receive it. I mean, you expect the other nations to not receive this truth, because, again, who wants to know as a nation of people that you're going into captivity? Who wants to believe that? Right. But our people, all right, this is meant for our people, yet they won't take hold of it. Because they ultimately believe that they belong in this position forever. They don't believe that they're better than the other nations. They don't believe that they deserve to be equal to these other nations, let alone above them. And this is why Jake takes all their frustration out on each other, because they have that inferiority complex. All right. This is why they overcompensate. For the fact that as a nation of people, we're not rich and they overcompensate by buying things that they can't afford to impress each other. To compete with each other. When you listen to the music. You know, Jake talks about sleeping with another man's wife and it's an act of competition. Amongst each other. Because they don't believe that they're better than the other nations. So the only thing that they have left is to compete with each other. All right. This is why the scriptures say this before I get Isaiah two. Is Isaiah chapter three and verse five. 
And it reads, And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Now the scriptures tell us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But if you don't love yourself, all right, if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, if you hate yourself and your nation, then how can you love anybody? And what you see goes ultimately back to the curses. This is why Jake's eyes evil towards each other, because ultimately they don't care about themselves. They don't look at themselves as important. They don't look at themselves as the sons of God. They believe what the so-called white man has told them about themselves. And that goes back to that inferiority complex that our people have carried around. This is why they believe that they need, all right, the things that Esau offers them to feel confident. Jake is pressed to go get chains and, and watches and cars. And it's really not because they truly like cars and clothes. And it's because they want to show everybody that they're uh, confident that they have status according to Esau's definition, which is an act of overcompensating. If you believe that you're a nation above all people, you don't need those things to validate it. You don't need the um, opinion of the people who put you in slavery to validate your existence. This is why the scriptures say this, Isaiah 10 and 20, and it reads, and it shall come to pass that it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Yahshua Allah in truth. Now, when we go here and we grab that Hebrew word for stay in Isaiah 10 and 20. All right. That Hebrew word. Is Sha'am or Sha'am Sha'am and it says to lean on trust in support to lean lean upon support oneself of trust in God it says to support oneself lie a uh, lean lie rely rest on self stay so our people trust in Esau Edom. All right. They trust in him that smote them. And this is why they buy his things in an effort to make themselves feel like they're on the same level. Which goes back to that inferiority complex. This is why when our people hear that they're going to have slaves or servants in the kingdom of heaven, it offends them because ultimately it goes back to an inferiority complex. Esau has told Jake his whole life, you don't deserve anything and you should be happy to just be alive. And Jake has accepted what Esau has told him about himself. This is why the Lord said this, right? When you go into Matthew 12 and we jump down to verse 29 it reads or else or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house and one of the major ways Esau has spoiled uh, or binded the strong man is by removing his confidence and giving him an inferiority complex this is why Jake is willing to rob and steal and kill to go get designer shoes. All right. To spend the, their life savings on a chain or a car. Because they ultimately don't believe that they're equal to the other nations or better. And this goes back to this inferiority complex. And that's why without a vision, our people are going to perish 10 times out of 10. All right. Why? Because if you don't have the vision of Yahweh Shem El Shai, you are lost. You're tossed to and fro. And now you're subject to believe whatever the so-called white man tells you. And this is why our people lean on or trust in him. All right. Proverbs 29 and 18 reads where there is no vision. 
the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And this is why the truth shall set you free, because when you understand this truth, you understand that Esau Edom is a servant on a horse for a short period of time. And that we're the rich, Lord willing, we be a part of that number sitting in low place. But we don't belong in the low place. There's a difference. There's a difference between bearing the indignation as a as being subject under these nations and believing you belong here. Under these nations forever. That's the mentality two thirds of our people have. That's why they're willing to settle for a real estate uh, license and an online business. All right. In a nice house in the suburbs. As opposed to being actually free. From uh, other nations of people. Because they believe what the lies Esau has told them about themselves, but the remnant, all right, who have escaped that through the spirit have a different mindset. Isaiah 10 and 20 reads, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Yahshua Allah in truth. So our confidence now goes back to Yahweh by Shemal Shai. All right. We don't need Esau's um, validation to prove that we exist. We don't need Esau to tell us that we're equal to him because we know we're above him. Not by our own works, but by the election of the heavenly father as a nation of people beginning with the elect. And this is where our confidence is. This is Jeremiah chapter nine and verse twenty three. And it reads, let not. Oh, excuse me. Verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he know that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am Yahweh, which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight. So when you're renewed in your mind through the spirit and you understand who you are as a nation of people and you understand who the heavenly father is, most importantly, you don't have Stockholm syndrome or an inferiority complex. You've been freed from those things. It's Joel chapter two and verse 27. And it reads, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Esau has convinced our people that we should be ashamed of our faith in the Heavenly Father. The words of our scriptures and our records. What we believe in. Who we are as a people. How we look. How we dance, how we move. Esau has tried to convince our people to be ashamed of these things. But when we return to Yahweh by Shemel Shah, we understand why our people are in this condition. And then we're not ashamed anymore because we understand we're going through a punishment. But this is not our permanent position on earth. And that's why the elect, Lord willing, we be a part of that number, have been freed from that bondage of believing that other nations are better than you. This is why when we uh, say, uh, we hasten the day to the kingdom of heaven. All right, because all of the nations that afflicted us are going into captivity and we hasten the day to see that. Because we want to see justice, we want to see the fall of our enemies, and you have to have a ruling class mentality to want to see that. To desire something like that. And you can't have a ruling class mentality and an inferiority complex. It's one or the other. And when you come back to your how about Shemel shine in truth and in sincerity, you're free from that bondage because now you understand that what Esau has taught you about yourself is a lie. Matter of fact, let's go to this. There's Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. And it reads, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. All right. And what does the scripture say about those princes? Right. How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out 
in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? The work of the hands of the potter. So we've been cast down, but we're not forsaken. That's the difference. Esau's a servant, man. All right. He's a servant pretending to be boss for a moment in time. This is not his permanent position on earth. And he knows that he has but a short time. That's why he's coming down with great wrath. That's why you got guys like Vocab Malone, who is so um, dedicated to trying to put our people back in graves. Because as they see us stand on our feet, a great exceeding army, they're becoming more and more afraid. Because we're now um, staying upon Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Now we're living by faith in Yahweh by Shemel Shai and not in what the so-called white man says is true. Most of our people, they don't believe what we say until a so-called white man approves it. Until the same things that we say come out of the mouth of someone who looks like an Edomite. And that shows you an inferiority complex in itself. Yet the hopeful elect has been separated from that. And that's a gift. That's nothing that they've done, but it's all the mercy of the Heavenly Father. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Now, this is Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 10. And it reads, delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. And we are the princes that the Lord is speaking of. And it's not seemly for Esau to have dominion over us. And that's why his days are appointed. All right. He was only set up as a punishment unto us. All right. This is Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And we see that time approaching quickly. And we hasten the day to see it through the spirit. Because ultimately, all right, the Lord's intention is to set us free from this bondage. To place us as the princes, the sons of God, again, in our rightful estate to return us back to that. But most of our people have adopted this inferiority complex where they don't believe they can't even imagine running a business, let alone ruling over nations of people. Yet the Lord's going to work a work in our day that most of our people won't believe, though it be told them. And this is why the kingdom of heaven doesn't come by observation. It's being seen in the minds and the, uh, the conduct and the behavior and the boldness of the elect. Lord, willing we be a part of that number? All right. So I'm going to end it with this, right? This Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse six. Because those of the hopeful elect, those of the elect are going to be the first fruits of this. And eventually the rest of the nation of Israel will be a partaker in it. Two thirds of our people will come through the loins of the elect. All right. This is Deuteronomy 15 and 6. And it reads for Yahweh by Shimei Shai. All right. Yahweh being the name of the one they call God. Yahweh Shai being the one they call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name. For the Lord thy God, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. And this is why through the spirit, the gospel or the good news, all right, is good news to us as a people, beginning with the elect, but bad news for everybody else. And for once, the, you, our people for once are having something that belongs to them. That nobody else can buy into, violate. And our people resist it because they believe that the lies Esau has told them are true. That we are only good for cooking and entertaining other people. And that's why having this vision is so important. Now, before I end this, I want to get that Hebrew word for rain. All right. So let's go to Deuteronomy 15 and verse six. And the Hebrew word for rain is. Masal. Let's see. Mashal. Mashal. All right. And it says to rule. 
have dominion, reign, to cause, to rule, to exercise dominion. All right. Matter of fact, let's look up this word dominion. Dominion, supremacy. Dominion, sovereignty or control. And this is what's being promised to us. All right. And the Lord is going to deliver this. But it starts in the mind. It starts in your in your spirit, in your mind. This is why the scriptures talk about the vision being so important where there is no vision of people perish, because if you don't have this vision of the kingdom. Then you won't get excited when you hear about us having rulership as joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. You won't get excited about that because you don't believe that it's talking about you, which goes back to that inferiority complex. And you have to understand that Esau has carefully crafted this society to make you feel inferior. This is why our people spend so much money on looking good and being broke at the same time. Because Esau has implanted in them that they're not good enough just by themselves. They need a chain. They need a watch. They need a car. And that's placing your confidence in something else, which goes back to overcompensating for the fact that you don't feel like you're good enough. Now, ultimately, it goes back to the curses like we went into the Hebrew word for doubt in Deuteronomy 28 and 66, which means to be uncertain. But when you come back to Yahweh by Shemel Shai, you know what you worship. And because of that, you glory in Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And all the things that Esau tells us about ourselves, we understand that they're lies. And we no longer stay upon him that smote us, Lord willing. All right, so with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah. And a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.